The ocean is an incredible place. Let's keep it that way. Join us as we hunt for sustainable seafood. Our seafood choices matter for the future of ocean health. Hey, it's Sarah Curry from Soraya Films. In this episode, I'm visiting a fish farm in central Florida that utilizes both ponds and tanks. This family-run farm grows sturgeon, hybrid striped bass, and tilapia. Let's check it out. In the small, quiet town of Pearson, a family is growing things you might associate with Florida, such as cattle. Down a winding road and through the oak trees, this family has also been quietly harvesting caviar, which comes from sturgeon. Sturgeon are living dinosaurs. They have inhabited the planet for hundreds of millions of years. Today we're meeting a mother, a daughter, and granddaughter. Three generations of women who have built and worked on this farm for over 30 years. I'm uh, Jane Evans Davis, and we're here at our family farm in Pearson. Here on the farm, I do lots of things. It's a, it's a working farm for cattle. We have a large fish farm operation. We have sturgeon, hybrid striped bass, and tilapia. That's a full-time job right there, and that's my primary responsibility. My degree is in aquaculture. So I guide the family on how we do all of the fish business, the sturgeon, the caviar. And then I also help out with all of our cattle operations. About 1,700 acres here. When mom and dad put the vision together for the farm, it always had multi-components to it. We had the fish farm, we had the, the cattle operation, we have timber. Um, and we have all the fields where we grow the grains. Since this is family owned, slowly we you know, found money to put into the farm to build it. So it took almost you know, 20 years, 25 years to build this farm and to make it sustainable. Our goal is to have a family operation for multi-generations. We want to keep this family farm. I think the water level is looking pretty good. What do you think? So what are we doing right now? Lauren's gonna hop in the tank and we're gonna do what we call a belly check. She will look at the confirmation of the fish, put it in our net and we'll pull it over to the side and do a quick sonogram to validate that it has eggs. Straighten her up, there you go. Let her get calm. The ultrasound saves us from having to do extra biopsies. I can identify the size of the egg and how the eggs are spaced together. For me, it's very accurate. Jane is deciding if the fish is a caviar fish, which means it will be harvested for its eggs, or if it's a spawner. If the eggs look good enough to be caviar, the fish will be moved inside, where they will be monitored more closely. The water is also cooler in the tanks inside, which is necessary to help get the eggs ready. If Jane decides the fish is a spawner, it will stay in the outside tanks and be used to repopulate the farm. All of the fish on the farm originally came from other farms in Europe. They've never taken any fish from the wild. And there's enough genetic diversity within the fish to spawn multiple generations for years to come. Growing up, what we would do is we would use those ponds to like catch our first fish. And it was almost like every cast that you had caught a fish. And as a kid, it's like the most exciting thing. So I actually grew up in Orlando. That's where my mom had her job at the Living Seas at Disney. So we would come here on the weekends to work on the farm. And that's kind of where I got introduced to the hardworking aspect of fish farming. I really got my hands dirty at a young age helping out and then kind of grew up loving that hard work. Once I got into the field, 
and learned how important aquaculture would be, it just made me all the more excited to kind of be a part of this. What we do when I come to visit is just focus on some projects that really require a lot of hands-on work. And with the caviar production, that's you know between three to five people that are kind of required for that process, especially lifting the fish. And since my mom and my grandma are getting older, I don't let them do any of that anymore, but they still will try and pull it away from me because they want to do it. Here in the United States, there's very few surgeon uh, farms, mostly because it's a, it is very large capital investment to get started. You have to have chilled processing rooms to be able to process the caviar. You need to be able to put the fish in a little bit cooler water so that the female's eggs will get ready to make caviar. It takes eight to 10 years on the average for a fish to become mature. That's a long time to feed that animal very similar to the cattle industry, but you know, we only get one harvest off of it. It is a riskier agricultural operation than some of the other uh, operations. Uh -huh. Three. Not so bad, guys. My out is not. The switch, and ready, head first. Caught on this other piece. The farm is raising three species of sturgeon. Ocestra, Siberian, and Savruga. The first fish they took out was a Siberian sturgeon. And while they have an idea of which fish might be ready, they don't actually know until they take a biopsy which eggs are perfect. Those are up. Nice belly. Hopefully that's full of caviar. Hopefully that's caviar. So we cut through uh, just the epidermis and we make a small incision into where the uh, the eggs are sitting there. This little cannula pulls them out. We should be getting more eggs. Oh, I don't know guys. But I have a, a gut feeling that she's not gonna have full set of caviar. Let's what do you go think? sample another one then. Do you want a marker? I want you to be in love with this fish. Yeah, let's put her back. The second fish they sampled was a savruga sturgeon, a fish smaller than the first Siberian, and they hope this is the one. She's really good looking savruga. Right color and the right size, and then the last part of the exam is they gotta roll, not break. Yep. Okay, here comes the, uh, the connoisseur part. Pops, ready to go. My name is Marilyn Evans, and I am the oldest around person of the Evans Farms. Matriarch, I guess you'd call that, huh? We met in school and we dated and two years later we were married in 1960. Then came children, Jane, Gino and Todd. He was a different kind of person. He raced dirt track. He was a um, NASCAR state champion in 1969. He also did treasure diving. He did a lot of research on Spanish treasures and he had a boat that they took to the Bahamas and worked uh, several wrecks there. But then the farm was always come back to the farm to work, okay, to develop the fish and, and find some sales. We bought the first property in 1982. And uh, of course it was then, it was all, you know, the woods and stuff. And so we had to build the roads and, and then build where we we're gonna put the ponds and the fields. When we started off with just having hybridized bass and also the tilapia, he wanted a, a species that would give us um, an added product. And that's why we went into the sturgeon. So really all the plans that he put into action was his original plans. And the kids and I are just trying to follow through with what he started. All fish have eggs, right? And uh, you know, why is sturgeon caviar? It was actually became a law that only sturgeons can be sold, their eggs can be sold for caviar way back in the early 1900s. Tell Lauren we're ready for 
Sturgeon eggs have always been held to a high standard because they were the food of the kings and et cetera, because of their large eggs. Once folks figured out how to brine them, to store them and keep them, they became a staple for many of those countries as food of the royalty and even, even fishermen, families. That was an easy way to have protein. Honestly, it's nerve wracking because some of the first times that we were harvesting caviar, trying to make sure that we were doing everything properly, it's been us trying to refine those techniques to get it where we need to. Most caviar in the U.S. is imported and can sit in tins for years before it makes it to the consumer. Imported caviar is also subject to different preservation methods. Here in the United States, since caviar is a ready-to-eat product, the Food and Drug Administration regulates it. We know that we have a safe product and it's a, an, an excellent tasting product. And I would just be careful if I went to buy my caviar, I would try to make sure that you bought a caviar that came from the United States or an inspected by the United States FDA. It tastes like butter. It's amazing. My favorite dish is to take scrambled eggs and put uh, caviar on top of the scrambled eggs and I have eggs on eggs, but it's, uh, it adds a buttery, just a hint of, of salt, you know, flavor to those eggs and it's my favorite breakfast. And we'll either smoke the meat and make my mom's wonderful smoked fish dip, or we will um, sell it to a lot of the local markets here in, in our area. Really just the strength of both of them is just amazing to me to see that they can kind of continue my grandpa's legacy of trying to continue to farm braised sturgeon to produce caviar, but then also trying to stay with the local markets as well. And that's kind of why we got involved with send, selling tilapia and hybrid bass as well, to make sure that we can try and sustain some of our farm expenses while we wait for the sturgeon to develop before they can become profitable for us as well. Our farm is super unique because we have a mixture of species that kind of are rotated between ponds and tanks. This hybrid system means that the baby striped bass and tilapia start their lives in the ponds, eating plankton. They're weaned onto fish feed, then transferred to the recirculating tanks after about three or four months. Once they're in the tank, then we feed the fish. Each species has their own diet. It's made by a fish nutritionist and it meets their needs so that they can grow. Tilapia takes us about six to eight months to get a market-sized tilapia, and it takes us about 18 months to get a two-pound hybrid striped bass. We're actually unique here at Evans Farms. We take our tank water and recycle it through our ponds, and we let Mother Nature clean up our water, and we polish it with sand filters. So the water all drains into a large reservoir, which is about five acres of water, we pick it up with sand filters to polish it, put it back into our fish growing tanks. And so we have a lot of natural processes happening with our water. Both fish are excellent eating once you start raising them in our very clean water and feeding them high quality diets. The meat is excellent quality. And that's why they go to the live markets. Caviar is a treat, and I'm going to wait for that special occasion so I can sit down and really appreciate it. And since I've never handpicked my own fish for dinner, Jane sent us down to a longtime customer of the farm, Lamb's Garden in Orlando. Hey, Gwen, how's it going? Good, you? Good. So I just left the Evans Farm, and that's where you guys get your uh, striped bass and tilapia, right? Absolutely, yes. We've been doing it for a long, long time. How many years do you think? In 1994, we started going to Evans Farm. Wow, 1994. Yeah. And so you have some fish in here from Evans Farm yes, right now, they're right? all from Evans Farm, striped bass and the tilapia, both of them. Great, so I kind of want to try some striped bass. No problem, I'll cook you one up. Okay. All thanks. right, let's do it. <laughs> Jane likes selling into the live market because she gets a better price for her fish. It's difficult to compete in the frozen market with the amount of tilapia coming in from outside of the country. And for Quan, he knows he's getting the freshest fish possible. Lamb's Garden has been serving Chinese food in the Orlando community since 1989. He made me a very simple yet delicious dish. After scaling the fish, he steamed it for a few minutes until it was cooked just right. 
There's not a lot that needs to be done to fish when it's this fresh. Wow. That looks beautiful, thank you. Sure. So ginger, scallions. Ginger, scallions, cilantro, and soy sauce, and a little bit of vegetable oil. It's very healthy. Perfect. Okay. Thanks so much. All right, enjoy. Will do. This fish tastes even better after having spent the last two days in the farm, seeing how it was grown and meeting the people that grew it. Fish farming is a hard industry, so it's pretty amazing to see a family be able to succeed for the past 30 years, with plans to be around for generations to come.